they have the heart of the Woodstock generation, but they re replaced, you know, the doobie with the internet and with cameras. You know, they've gone out and they've said, we want to see change and we're not giving up. It's time that this generation steps up and starts making a legacy of its own. A legacy of global action, of not just wanting to change the world, but with the help of a camera, actually doing it. John Larson, NBC News, San Diego. In his 26-year campaign, Coney has kidnapped more than 65,000 boys and girls, kids, forcing them to maim their fellow villagers and sometimes, to prove their loyalty to Coney, kill their own families. Coney says he's doing it all in the name of God, but the children's stories paint a picture of hell on earth. CNN has covered it since the beginning. We were forced to bite him with our bare teeth as he screamed in pain. We continued biting until he was dead. Getting rid of Coney, say experts, is a great goal, but it is utterly naive to think that alone will end violence in Uganda. The government itself there has been accused of violence and abuse. Jacob is a seven-year-old child of war in Uganda. In 2003, Russell took a camera to Uganda and found children terrified of being kidnapped and used for war. That documentary led to today's social media manhunt and call for action. Since the late 80s, he's led an extremist group called the Lord's Resistance Army. In Uganda, he's accused of turning tens of thousands of girls into sex slaves and boys into soldiers. People aren't just watching, they're taking action. 16-year-old Caroline Cabbage organized friends at her Los Angeles high school to raise awareness and money, about $4,000 so far. I don't know what it was, but there's something about their tears and their voices that um, I just couldn't stand. He's accused of kidnapping as many as 30,000 children in the past 26 years. Turning the girls into sex slaves and the boys into child soldiers, and he forces them to kill their own parents. But in Uganda, journalist Rose Bell Kagamire thinks the film exaggerates the facts and wonders what lasting good it will do. It simplifies a war that is so complex and gives this picture that, you know, only a certain person, if a college student in America gives them money, they will stop Connie. So I'm wondering, where is the link between them getting money and stopping Joseph Kony. Uh, it took, frankly, months uh, to track this guy down. He very rarely appears uh, out of his jungle hideout. Uh, and it was only after a, a long and very protracted journey that I was actually able to catch up with him in a clearing in Eastern Congo. Uh, I mean, it was a remarkable scene to see him finally emerge out of the bush, uh, dressed in a white suit and flanked by a kind of phalanx uh, of child soldiers uh, carrying rifles and, and sort of flopping along in their Wellington boots. Is that th This man is, is an almost mythical figure in northern Uganda. He's a, a man who inspires terror in an entire community. He, he takes orders from a holy spirit. Yet when he appeared in person, it, he almost seemed more frightened of us than, than we were of him. He, he, he came forward and presented himself to his visitors and he, he said in a, an almost quavering voice, I'm a man. I'm a human being. I'm Joseph Coney. It's now reportedly gotten nearly 60 million views. Also a lot of controversy, some questioning the accuracy of the story. We wanted to let you know that on Monday night here on this broadcast, we'll be on the ground in Uganda with a reality check. And while there are questions about the details of the story and about the charity behind the film, tonight in Uganda there's no question the people we found are still terrified about this man and what he did. NBC's Rohit Katru reports tonight from a remote village outside Uganda. Even though his troops left this town seven years ago, they still pose a threat elsewhere in the region. Mothers here cling to their children, fearing they may return. On the outskirts of town, we find Lily, one of Kony's former wives, a child bride forced to marry him in 1998. She escaped with one of the five children she had with him and now fears the video will just make Kony more famous, more dangerous. She says the campaign will have empowered him and if he returns, people should be scared. Very little is known about a sensitive mission being carried out by a hundred U.S. Special Operations troops deep in the jungles of Central Africa. 
they've joined several thousand African soldiers in one of the biggest manhunts that's ever taken place. Their goal is to help kill or capture the world's most wanted warlord, Joseph Kony, and destroy his army. This mission is part of a broader U.S. effort to counter the emerging threat to America from the growth of terrorist networks across Africa. It's really an African problem. It's being handled by Africans. Colonel Kurt Kreitzer, a veteran Green Beret of 23 years, flew with us over the seemingly endless jungle. When you get to the jungle, yeah, 50 feet in, you, you disappear. You're like a ghost. You're like a ghost. And no one has suffered more than the children. The State Department says Kony's army has abducted more than 25,000. He turns the boys into killers, the girls into a harem of sex slaves and wives. He wanted his Lord's Resistance Army to establish a government based on the Ten Commandments, but he's broken almost every one of them, and his army is little more than a murderous cult. The Americans train them in their native French, using the language skills that come with being a Green Beret. And they show them how to make the best of the little they have, like using their beret as a field dressing or a stick as a makeshift tourniquet. Colonel Kreitzer says they have to know how to treat themselves or they die. Building relationships is central to the mission of Green Berets, no matter where they are in the world. To earn the trust of the locals in these villages, Colonel Kreitz's soldiers use their skills in unlikely ways, helping out at the local dentist and even delivering babies. Kony rules by fear and claims he has mystical powers, a formidable combination in the minds of the children he kidnaps. <laughs> 